see each one of you today. I trust and hope that everyone is ready, that your hearts and minds are clear, and we seek to worship our God today. He told us, he says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. We're here today to lift up the name of our God. We're here today to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. He told us, he said, my house should be called a house of prayer for all people. And we're here today to glorify and magnify the name of our God. We're going to begin with a selection and after this selection uh, we will go into our scripture reading and our prayer. May the Lord's name be praised. <laughs>
18 through verse 20. Isaiah 41, verse 18 through 20. He says, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, and the shitter tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together, verse 20, that they may see and know, and consider, and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Amen. Amen. God bless the reading of his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you because you have seen us through another week. Yes, Lord. And you brought us to a new week. Yes. A new experience, a new opportunity to serve you. Lord, we pray for all of those that are going through difficult times, hardships. We pray today that you enlighten their love. We pray today, Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen them in the midst of their struggles. That you give them wisdom and knowledge. That you will help them to grow in every area those that are sick, those who are going through pain in their bodies. We pray for your healing power to be manifest on, on their behalf. Those that are grieving right now, I pray you will send to them words of comfort, uh, that you will manifest yourself in ways that only you know how, to, that they may know that you're with them and that you're able to provide for all of their needs, whether they be emotional needs, whether they be spiritual needs, financial needs, you're able to provide. Yes. And we give you praise and we give you glory. We pray, Heavenly Father, uh, for all of your children today, Macedonia yes. and other places. Our situations are different. But our need is the same. We need you, Lord. We need your word. We need your power. We need you to manifest yourself in our lives. We need you to show yourself strong on our behalf. And Lord, when it's all said and done, we're going to give you the glory. For the glory is due unto your name. And Lord, we thank you even now. We're not waiting to see what you're going to do. We know you're a God that knows the end from the beginning. And we know that it is already done. So bless your children. Bless your people. Prosper our every effort to do good and to serve others. We bless your holy name. And we ask all of this 
faithful act in the name of Jesus. Amen.
always been good to me. Today, we're going to come from the scripture text that is found in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2. 2 Kings, chapter 2. We'll give you a moment to get there. 2 Kings, chapter 2. And we're going to notice what he tells us here. Verses 19 through 22. Verses 19 through 22 of 2 Kings chapter 2. It's a blessing to see each one of you today. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 19, he tells us there, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Amen. Amen. Our topic today is entitled, It is Time to Change the Chemistry. It is time to change the chemistry. We see here in 2 Kings chapter 2, the city of Jericho, that ancient city. And the Bible lets us know that there was a terrible situation Jericho is related to the water supply of the city. As we read 2 Kings chapter 2, the men of the city approached Elisha. Elisha was known to be a miracle worker. And because he had that reputation, when Elisha was in Jericho, they approached him concerning the dilemma that they were facing in Jericho. When they said to Elisha, they said that the city is beautiful as it relates to its architecture, as it relates to its beautiful homes and and beautiful land. But he said that the water supply is poisonous. And as a result of the poisonous water supply, the land had become very barren. If you were to take a stroll the hillside of Jericho, and you were to overlook the city, 
You will find it to be very breathtaking. You will find it to be a very grand and impressive scene. Picturesque and photographic. You see all the beautiful colors of the flowers. You will see how lush and, and how pleasant the city is. But something was happening in the city that was changing the city from being a very beautiful place uh, uh, to a situation where the city was the, the landscape and the greenery and the gardens were becoming dry <coughs> and barren. That ancient river you would see, the Jordan River, twisting and turning its way through the city. You would see the waters flowing down the hillside. You would see how the river made its way through the city, diffusing life and health throughout the valley. And so we see here the men of the city, because the water supply had become poison. They said to Elisha, the city is pleasant, but the streams have become corrupted. And, and, and as we look at the situation, a very beautiful city, but a city that is on its way to death because of the polluted stream. It reminds me of many people today in this world. They look very attractive on the outside. They, they're smiling on the outside. They, are, they, they appear to be doing well uh, to all obvious appearances. But the current of their life is corrupted. Their hearts have been poisoned by the contaminating influences that are in the world. But I want to give God the praise today because he doesn't just look at us on the outside. He sees us on the inside. He sees us through and through. He sees what's really going on. When other people mistakenly think that you're doing all right, our God doesn't make any mistakes. Yeah. And he sees exactly what we're going through. Yeah. The city was pleasant, but the streams had become corrupted. In other words, what the men in the city were saying is Elisha, Yes, it looks like everything is okay. It appears as everything is going on as normal. But understand, Elijah, that our, our rivers and our springs have become contaminated. And the city is suffering as a result of the contamination. I want you to know today that this city was fair from without, but it was corrupt when you got a closer look at what was going on. And this society that we're living in today appears to be doing well. But I want you to know the springs have become corrupted. And, I'm, and, and many are suffering on the inside. While everything appeared to be going right on the outside. It appears that people are doing well financially. It appears that they're doing well emotionally. It appears that they're doing well in their relationships. 
but there's, there is a corrupt influence on the inside of them that is not obvious to those who are not looking with the spiritual eye. And so as a result of, of these streams being contaminated, the waters were very bitter. The waters have become toxic. The waters have become sickening. And let me tell you something, if you are not careful, if you don't leave your home prayed up yes. every day, yes, Lord. let me tell you something, yes, the Lord. invisible <clears throat> currents of this society will sicken you. Yes. Yes. So will cause you to have a bad mood. Yes. Will cause you to have a bad attitude. Yes. Will cause you to become better on the inside. Mm -hmm. But God is calling you today to not be one of those who are sickened by the toxicity that is in this world. But God is calling you to be one of those who will change the chemistry for the good in our world. Oh yes, there are invisible currents and streams flowing through our land. Polluted streams that are hazardous to our health and are hazardous to our spirituality. They are bitter and they are extremely toxic. I'm talking about the currents that are flowing through our world. The currents of hatred. The currents of resentment, the currents of unforgiveness, the currents of, of, of wishing bad for other people, the currents of negativity, the currents of, of arrogance, the currents of hard hearts, the currents of despising one another, they are flowing through our world, but they are invisible. If we, could, if, if we were to go to a river, a creek, or a stream for our water supply, and we saw that the water was all brown and rusted, if we were to, if, if we were to just to turn on our, our faucet, or, or turn on the sh our shower, <coughs> yes. and, 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 and out from the shower, the water was red and, and rusty and contaminated, you wouldn't get in that shower, would you? Mm -mm. But the issue with the currents of this world is we can't see them. Yes. We cannot see them with the physical eye. But I want you to know that you can see them with the spiritual eye. Yes. And just as you would not hop into a shower where rust and, and mud and contamination is coming out, what makes us think that we can just jump out into this world without prayer, without the word of God, and just jump out there with no spiritual protection. Yeah. It's just like jumping into a, a shower that you see all kind of contamination coming out of it. Yeah. Let me tell you, what I'm saying in other words is that this world is so toxic yeah. that so many hazardous streams flowing in this world. You better be prayed up when you go out into this world. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Or you will <clears throat> be sick. Hazardous streams, the currents in our land. And Jesus talked about this. He talked about out of the heart flow. 
evil thoughts. Out of the heart flow murderous thoughts. Out of the heart flow envious thoughts, hateful thoughts. They flow out of the heart of man. And so, and so there are hazardous streams flowing through the relationships of life. The transactions of life, the, our interactions and our communications, they are hazardous streams. And so the men of the city came to Elisha and they, they, they told him about this terrible situation that they were in. And Elisha, who was in tune with God, understood exactly what he needed to do. He said, go on and, and grab me a jar and put some salt in the jar. Because Elijah understood that that salt would be the means of healing those waters. And I watched it another day that Jesus said that you and I, we are the salt of the earth. And, and salt introduces a unique flavor to the food we eat. And salt has a preserving quality. Because you see, they didn't have refrigeration in those days. They had to preserve things by putting it in the earth and preserving it with the salt. And God has called you and, you and I, he's called us to be the salt of the earth. He's calling you and me to be a, a healing element into the various relationships, transactions, and, and communications in our society. He has called us to be repairers, restorers, and those who, who will revive broken hearts and broken relationships and he has called us to purify the polluted streams and currents that are flowing through our land. And that's why he's planted you in the areas that he has planted you. He's planted you to mingle within the currents of this society in which we live. He has planted you within a particular current so that through your influence the polluted streams and the corrupted streams can be altered and made pure. They can be altered when everybody else is mean but kindness is flowing out of you. They can be altered when everybody else has been inconsiderate and thoughtfulness and compassion is flowing out of you. When everybody else is at, at odds with one another, flowing out of you is the expression that Jesus gave. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. He has planted you to be one who will change the chemistry, to change the toxic and viral man in which we live, and to alter and reverse and to shift the poisonous nature of the currents that are flowing invisibly in our world. <clears throat> but the problem that so many are experiencing is that rather than changing the current and altering the chemistry and the society in which we live, so many are allowing the currents to change them. Yeah. To cause them to 
go from being kind to being unloving. And I'm here to let you know today that no matter how mean this world becomes, no matter how merciless and how cruel this world becomes, don't you dare allow the cruelty and the meanness and the viciousness of this world alter the chemistry that's flowing within your life. But God has called you to be an agent of change yes. and has planted you in the environment that he has planted you so that you can be a healing force and whatever environment he's placed you in. Everywhere you go, they all will say, I feel a whole lot better yes. after they walk into the room. They ought not be feeling down and discouraged because they came into your presence. Uh, they, they ought to be able to say, I'm glad I crossed paths with him. I, I'm glad I crossed paths with her because I, I was feeling so low, but now I'm lifted up. Every place that you go ought to be better off because you have crossed paths. And you have been a healer rather than one that will sicken those that you come around. And so Elisha journeyed, having received the salt. He journeyed to the spring of the river. He didn't just, he didn't pour the salt into the river. He journeyed to the spring. Because you see, the spring is the source of the river. You see, if the spring is bad, the river is going to be bad. And let me tell you something. The reason why people's actions are so negative is because their hearts are impure. And you see what God is trying to do today. He's trying to get to the spring. He's trying to get to the source. Because if the source can be changed, because you see if the spring can be changed, then the actions will become changed. Yes. And so it's amazing to me that the Lord had Elisha to use salt to be, to be cast into this river. Because never before have we ever heard of salt uh, being, having a, 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 a capacity to, to change a water supply from being polluted to clean. But I want you to know that God has a reason for doing that. For you see, the water that we bathe with has to go through a purification system. And one of the chemicals that they use to, to purify the water is chlorine. And you see, if, if Elijah had used chlorine and threw it into the water, and the water had become clean, they would have given the credit to the glory and not to the God of Elisha. And so God works in mysterious ways so that the way that he solves the problem, he solves it in a mysterious way so that people will not say it was because of a natural means, that the cure came about, but they will be able to say that it was because of the power of the living God that a miracle came about. And so Elisha heard the terrible news. And he saw the desperation on the faces of the men of the city. He saw the terrible disappointment the disappointment that was in 
in their eyes. And it's so the fearfulness in their behavior and the concern that they had for the sick. And it was, uh, it was in that very moment that Elijah called for a jar of salt. And, and when the jar of salt was brought unto the prophet, Elijah grabbed hold of, of that jar of salt. And Elijah journeyed up that hill, the hillside of the Jordan Valley. And he went on toward the spring and the fountainhead of this river. And when Elijah arrived, when he arrived at the spring and the fountainhead of the river, Lord have mercy, Elisha emptied out. He emptied out the jar of salt and the fountainhead and spring, which was the original source of the river. And as the salt began to mingle, mingle within the Jordan River, mingle within the chemistry of the river. This ancient river began to take on. It began to take on a medicinal quality that they had never known before. And a supernatural metamorphosis began to occur in the river. And the chemical composition of the river caused the the chemistry of the river to become altered. And the men of the city were amazed that such a miracle had taken place. As the death and toxicity of the river miraculously began to disappear, and the abundant streams and currents of this, this Abundant river was suddenly transformed. Transformed in a single moment. From a polluted river that had brought poison into the land. Miraculously began to be altered. Went from poisonous to purified in an instant. And I want you to hear what Elisha said. He said, never again, never again, will these rivers ever be polluted. And the word that he spoke was the powerful word of the Lord. And so what, what God was saying in this instance, He's saying that not only do I have the capacity to change a situation, but I also have the capacity to keep you from falling back into the situation that caused you to be sick to begin with. Thank you, Jesus, that you're such a keeper. Yes, Lord. Not only do you have the capacity to change me, but you have the capacity to transform and to keep me from falling back into the situation that caused me to become sick to begin with. And never again did these waters ever become poison. And all the succeeding generations that would follow. For the God that we serve specializes and taking something that is defiled, he specializes in taking something that is corrupted, he specializes in taking something that is poisonous and sickening and transforming it by his grace. Amen. And I want you to know that there is more healing power in the name of Jesus 
than all the pharmaceutical companies in this world. And I don't care how long you have lived in a poisonous environment. I don't care how long you've been sickened by the meanness and the cruelty of this world. Our God is able to change the situation at an instant. He's able to change the situation at a moment. As soon as we call on his wonderful name, he's able to transform. He's able to alter. He's able to cause the toxicity to disappear. And he's able to remake you and change you into what he wants you to be. And for that reason, I glorify and magnify the name of the Most High God. Amen. You may be someone here today, you've heard the word of the Lord. Yeah. And you understand that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, the Son of God, our Savior of the world. You recognize today, you said in your heart, I need a Savior. Yes, Lord. Jesus is that Savior. And he will receive you if you will simply open up your heart to him today and give him your life. I want you to think about committing your life to Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior as our followers come forward and I pray today that you will indeed make your decision for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray that as you give your heart to him today I pray that he will bring healing into your life.
who has been in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I give him glory today because I know that he is working miracles where we can't even see. Yes. Uh, God is moving in ways that well, we can't see or understand, but we know that indeed he is moving. I want to thank God uh, for using our musicians and soloists today as well as give them a big hand as well. Let's stand together at this time as we have our benediction. And remember also to tune in on Wednesday night as well. Tune in Wednesday night at 6.30 for our Bible study. Uh, please don't, don't miss our Bible studies on Wednesday night. And we encourage you to invite others as well uh, to join in Facebook Live on Wednesday